Hello everyone. So in today's video, I am going to go over this paper titled EDA Easy Data Augmentation Techniques for Boosting Performance on Text Classification Tasks by Jason Wei and Kai Zhou from Protago Lab Research, Tyson's Corner, Virginia and Department of Computer Science at Dartmouth College. Uh, so both of these are Jason's affiliations and Kai's affiliations are with the Department of Math and Statistics, Georgetown University. All right. So this is basically as the paper title reads, a data augmentation technique for NLP tasks, basically text classification tasks. So, and we'll just uh, jump right into it. All right. So the abstract, we present EDA, easy data augmentation techniques for boosting performance on text classification tasks. EDA consists of four simple but powerful operations. So the operations are synonym, synonym replacement, random insertion, random swap and random deletion. So on five text classification tasks, we show that, that EDA improves performance for both convolutional and recurrent neural nets. EDA demonstrates particularly strong results for smaller datasets on average across five datasets. Training with EDA while using only 50% of the available training set achieve the same accuracy as normal training with all the available data. So this indeed seems quite powerful if half the data is giving same amount of result. We also performed ex extensive ablation studies and suggest parameters for practical use. All right. So basically what they've done is they're using these four techniques to create new, uh, new data from existing training data, which they use on their classification tasks. And this paper is from 2019. All right. So the introduction, text classification is a fundamental task in NLP. ML and DL have achieved high accuracy on uh, tasks ranging from sentiment analysis to topic classification but high performance often depends on the size and quality of training data which is often tedious to collect. So if you have ever worked on NLP tasks or any other uh, deep learning tasks you know that annotating data is a pain and even getting good quality data to annotate in the first place is also a very tedious task. Automatic data augmentation is commonly used in computer vision and speech and can help train more robust models particularly when they use smaller data sets. So in computer vision, you have all those invariances such as translation invariance, rotation invariance and such. So the same image can be used in multiple forms. However, because it is challenging to come up with generalized rules for language transformation, universal data augmentation techniques in NLP have not been thoroughly explored. So uh, yesterday I recorded another video and uploaded, uh, which was basically a survey paper on area techniques. And uh, it was a pretty recent paper from 2021. Uh, if you do, haven't read that paper, I'll highly recommend uh, watching that video and reading that paper also. It covers a lot of different aspects of data augmentation. Previous work has proposed some techniques for data augmentation in NLP. One popular study generated new data by translating sentences into French and back into English. So this is back translation. Other work has used data noising as smoothing and predictive language models for synonym replacement. Although some, although these techniques are valid, they are not often used in practice because they have a high cost of implementation relative to performance gain. So if you're using a predictive language model to get synonyms, then you need to train model, fine tune it on the data set and then randomly mask data and all of that stuff. So it is a pretty uh, computationally heavy task. In this paper, we present a simple set of universal data augmentation techniques for NLP called EDA. To the best of our knowledge, we are the first to comprehensively explore text editing for data augmentation. We systematically evaluate EDA on five benchmark classification tasks, showing that EDA provides substantial improvements on all five tasks and is particularly helpful for smaller datasets. And the code is publicly available in this repository as well. So uh, we'll go to the table once it appears in the text. So section two EDA. Frustrated by the measly performance of text classifiers trained on small datasets, we tested a number of augmentation operations loosely inspired by those used in computer vision and found that they helped train more robust models. So here we present the full details of EDA. For a given sentence in the training set, we randomly choose and perform one of the following operations. So we saw the names earlier. So first we have synonym replacement SR, which randomly uh, you, where you randomly choose n words from the sentence that are not stop words and replace each of these words with one of its synonym chosen at random. Uh, so this part is pretty clear, but what are stop words? Stop words are basically words which do not provide context. Things like uh, the, an, is, 
so you can find a list of stop words for NLP all of these words are stop words and like there are large lists and there are for instance NLTK is one library which provides such a list then we have random insertion RI so you find a random synonym of a random word in the sentence that is not a stop word insert that synonym into a random position in the sentence and do this n times next you have random swap where you randomly choose two words in the sentence and swap their positions and do this n times or you have random deletion which randomly removes each word in the sentence with probability p so you might think that wouldn't this destroy the sentence itself so that is why they mentioned that they are also recommending some uh, values for n and other things uh, like p uh, so that you don't overdo stuff and uh, entirely lose the meaning of the sentence all right since long sentences have more words than short ones they can absorb more noise while maintaining their original class label so what do we mean by original class label for instance suppose you have a task of sentiment analysis so you have two classes either positive or negative sentiment so for a longer sentence you might presume there are more words which are also stop words or even if they are not stop words they uh, do not directly affect the label of the sentence or have lesser impact on the label of the sentence so in longer sentences you have more room to add noise to compensate we vary the number of words changed n for sr ri and rs based on the sentence length with the formula n is alpha l so n is dependent on the length of the sentence and alpha is a parameter that indicates the percent of words in a sentence that are changed also uh, alpha p is alpha for random deletion so random deletion is where you remove words with probability p so there is a say if alpha is uh, 0.2 then there's a 20 percent chance furthermore for each original sentence we generate n -og augmented sentences example of augmented sentences are shown in table 1 we note that synonym replacement has been used previously in these works but to our knowledge random uh, insertion swaps and deletions have not been ex extensively studied all right so you have the original sentence a sad superior human comedy played out on the back roads of life then you have syn synonym replacement where sad is replaced by uh, lamentable and back roads to backward roads then for random insertion you just insert the word funniness uh, in the sentence for random swap you swap the words roads and the and for random deletion a sad superior human out on the roads of life so you've removed the word uh, on the back here or out on the or you've just remove let's just see you've removed comedy you've removed played and you've removed back so i guess this example was pretty self-explanatory as to why a synonym, synonym replacement is replacing with synonyms because the name says so and so on right so let's have a look at their experimental setup so we choose five benchmark text classification tasks and two network architectures to evaluate eda so we conduct experiments on five benchmark text uh, classification tasks so you have sst2 which is stanford sentiment tree bank you have cr which is customer reviews you have sub which is subjectivity objectivity data set then you have trek which is question type data set and pc which is pro con data set so summary statistics are shown in table 5 in supplement materials uh, furthermore we hypothesize that eda is more helpful for smaller data sets so we delegate the following size data set by randomly selecting a subset of 500 train uh, 2000 5000 or all available data so the training set varies in these sizes all right so let's have a look at what table 5 is okay so this is just the size of the data set i guess so you have two classes in sst2 the average sentence length is 17 this is the training amount of training data the test data and the vocabulary size and so on for all the different data sets so you can see the track data set has six classes uh, and the highest average length is for sub data but it's quite close and it has more training data and so on all right so let's just go back to where we were yeah 
so for the text classification models we run experiments for two popular models in text classification so they use recurrent neural nets which are uh, suitable for sequential data so they use the lstm rnn and they have used convolutional neural nets which have also achieved high performance for text classification and they have used the implementation described in kim 2014 again the details are in section 9.1 which uh, maybe we'll have a look at later so for the results so in this section we test eda on five nlp tasks with cnns and rnns for all experiments we average results from five different random seeds so if you are not uh, familiar with random seeds uh, random seeds are basically uh, states of initialization for your model so the weights are randomly initialized based on a random seed there are other ways as well but random seeds basically since there is no truly random system which is also deterministic like uh, which can also be created by a deterministic system like a computer so you have a uh, pseudo random generators which have uh, which use seeds okay so let's have a look at this eda makes gains so we run both cnn and rnn with the with and without eda across all five datasets for varying training size average performances are shown in table 2 of note average improvement was 0.8% for full datasets and 3% for small datasets where you had the size of 500 so you can see uh for rnn if the size was uh, without you had 500 training uh, data labels uh, training data points you got 75.3% accuracy but if you added eda it raised to 79.1 so from this also went from 76.9 to 79.9 and you can see on an average there is a jump of 3% and as this uh, the data grows larger this uh, jump is smaller so i haven't read uh, their explanation yet but if i had to think why this is the case because the, the uh, it might just be the case that the original data has lots of configurations of the same sentence as well so similar kinds of sentences which are something which eda also generates because uh, eda is not using some uh, deep heavy model it's just doing those four operations to generate additional samples all right so the training set sizing so overfitting tends to be more severe when training on smaller data sets so by conducting experiments using a restricted fraction of the available training data we show that eda has more significant improvements for smaller training sets so what does this mean uh when you train on smaller data sets you have less data points for the model to train on so that is why it the model can more easily overfit to the data when you have more data points in the model is less likely to overfit on the data but of course it all depends on the number of epochs you run it for so if you are running it for a huge number of epochs then it is bound to overfit we run both normal training and eda training for the following training set fraction so 1% 5% all of these figure 1 a to e show performance with and without eda for each data set and 1f shows the average performance across all data sets the best average accuracy without augmentation 88.3% was achieved using 100% of the training data models trained using eda surpassed this number by achieving an accur average accuracy of 88.6% while only using 50% of the available training data so you can see there is a 0.3% jump uh even by using half of the training data so for instance this is sst2 uh where you if you have a uh, 0% of the you can see uh the accuracy of eda is higher already uh when you have less percentage and as the percentage grows uh it almost converges to the same value in all the cases so when you use all the data sets then you can uh, also have a look the initial difference is lesser i guess as compared to say what we had with sst2 so this is since uh, this is the case because you have these cases where the difference is large but you again have these cases where the difference is pretty small for instance the cr or the pc data set all right so now let's have a look at does eda conserve true labels so in data augmentation input data is altered while class labels are maintained if sentences are significantly changed however then original class labels may no longer be valid uh, so this might happen suppose if you have the sentence uh, i am happy and random deletion removes the word happy and random 
and uh, just say it removes the word happy so it no longer has first of all it does not make sense but also it no longer belongs to the positive sentiment uh, side so we take a visualization approach to examine whether ed operations significantly change the meaning of augmented sentences so first we train an rnn on the pro con classification task without augmentation then we apply ed to the test set by generating nine augmented sentences per original sentence these are fed into the rnn along with the original sentences and we extract the output from the last dense layer then they apply tsne which is a visualization technique to these vectors and plot their 2d representation so the last dense layer basically is uh, basically is Uh, can be represented as a vector and uh, the 2d representations are here so we found that the resulting latent space representation for augmented sentences closely surrounded those of the original sentences which suggests that for most part sentences augmented with eda conserve labels of their true sentences so let's have a look at the diagram uh, so i'll get both of them in frame right so that la blue triangle is the original pro and the small triangle is original eda the eda on the pro side so you can see they are distributed quite evenly in the sense that uh, the larger triangles are with the smaller triangle dots uh, smaller solid triangles and the larger hollow circles which were the original data points are uh, closely present with the smaller uh, dot uh, solid dot circles which indicate cons with eda so this seems to imply that uh, the true labels are retained in the in most cases because if that was not the case then the distribution would have uh, fallen so this dot would be here and uh, these blue dots would be more here and so on so now let's have a look at the ablation study eda decompose so far we have seen encouraging empirical results in this section we we'll perform an ablation study to explore the effect of each operation in eda synonym replacement has been previously used in these works but the other three ed operations have not yet been explored one could hypothesize that the bulk of eda performance gain is from synonym replacement so we isolate each of the ed operation to determine their individual ability to boost performance for all four operations we ran models using a single operation while varying the augmentation pair alpha so if you forgot what alpha is alpha was the coefficient which we, which we were using with uh the length so if it's 0.05 then you're randomly deleting 5% of uh the words or uh there is a five you're randomly choosing five uh randomly doing this five times or uh, things of that sort so alpha times l so if the length is 100 then you will do that five times if it's less than that then uh this n would also vary according to that it it turns out all four ed operations contribute to performance gain for uh sr improvement was good for small alpha but high alpha hurts performance likely because replacing too many words in a sentence changes the identity of the sentence so sr is basically a synonym replacement for ri which is random insertion performance gains were way more stable Uh, for different alpha values possibly because the original words in the sentence and their relative order were maintained in this operation a uh, random a uh, swap yielded higher performance gains at alpha less than 0.2 but declined at alpha greater than equal to 0.3 since performing too many swaps is equivalent to shuffling the entire order of the sentence random deletion had the highest gains for low alpha but severely hurt performance at high alpha as sentences are likely to be and become unintelligible if it of up to half the words are removed improvements were more substantial on smaller data sets for all operation and alpha equals to point 1 appears to be a sweet spot across the board so for alpha equal to point 1 you can see uh, the and for the 500 data uh, point data set you can see it's performing the best in almost all cases uh, and then the larger the data again it's falling and the more the alpha uh, in some cases it hampers the performance for random deletion alpha 0.5 means you've essentially removed half of the sentence or you've swapped label uh, sentence words across the entire sentence and so on. so the next question is how much augmentation the natural next step is to determine how 
the number of generated augmented sentences uh, per sentence uh, affects performance. So in figure 4 we show average performance over all data sets for 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and 32 augmented per, uh, sentences per sentence. So you can see when it's 16 it's the highest and once it goes towards 32 it begins to fall and from 1 to 16 it's rising. The trend is almost similar for full data as well but for uh, 2000 data points it starts falling after uh, 8 only but the fall is relatively smaller and uh, it uh, again bumps up uh, for 32 so I am thinking that this might be a this might almost be something like a constant so it's not like affecting too much uh, the, it's not affecting the performance too much because it's almost near to the uh, it's almost on a straight line if you draw a straight line there are very uh, slight deviations from that alright so so for smaller training sets overfitting was way more likely so generating many augmented sentences yielded large performance boosts. For larger training sets, adding more than 4 augmented sentences per original sentence was unhelpful since models tend to generalize properly when large quantities of real data are available. So based on these results, these are the recommended parameter uses. So depending on the task, your data set size, you can uh, pick up these values. Now let's have a look at the comparison with related works. Related work is creative but often complex. So back translation, translational data augmentation and noising have shown improvements in blue measure for machine translation. For other tasks, previous approaches include task specific heuristics and back translation. So if you are not familiar with back translation, it basically means that for say for uh, the case of uh, machine translation, suppose you have low amount of data for one uh, class or uh, one language, then what you will do is you will uh, take the sentence from language A convert it into language B and then using language B as a pivot convert it back to language A and since the model is not perfect it will create a variation of the original sentence which you can add to your data. Uh, regarding synonym replacement one study showed a 1.4% F1 boost for tweet classification by finding synonyms with K nearest neighbor using word embeddings. Another study found no improvement in temporal analysis when replacing head word with synonyms and mixed results were reported for using synonym replacement in character level text classification. However, neither work conducted extensive ablation studies. Most studies explore data augmentation as a complementary result for translation or, a, or in a task specific context. So it is hard to directly compare EDA with previous literature. But there are two techniques, two studies similar to ours that evaluate augmentation techniques on multiple data sets. So WHO 2017 proposes, proposed a generative model that combines a variational autoencoder and attribute discriminator to generate fake data which uh, got a 3% gain in accuracy on two data sets. So what this is, is you get a hidden space representation and I guess you then uh, train your attribute discriminator to be able to differentiate between uh, the different classes and then train the generative model to fool the discriminator. Uh, Kobayashi 2018 showed that replacing words with other words were that were predicted from the sentence context using a bidirectional language model yielded a 0.5% gain on 5 datasets. However, training a variational autoencoder or bidirectional LSTM language model is a lot of work. EDA yields results on the same order of magnitude but is much easier to use because it does not require training a language model and does not use external data sets. In table 4 we show EDA's ease of use compared with other techniques. So you can see almost all of them use a language model except uh, this synonym replacement using KNN but, uh, but EDA doesn't and 3 of them use external data sets but again EDA doesn't. So the one closest to EDA would be SRKNN where SRKNN is uh, actually an extension of the SR which EDA does just it uses KNNs to get those. Now let's have a look at discussions and limitations. 
So our paper aimed to address the lack of standardized data augmentation in NLP compared to vision by introducing a set of simple operations that might serve as a baseline for future investigation. With the rate that NLP research has progressed in recent years, we suspect that researchers will soon find high performing, aug high performing augmentation techniques that will also be easy to use. Notably, much of the recent work in NLP focuses on making neural models larger or more complex. Our work, however, takes the opposite approach. We introduce simple operations, the result of asking the fundamental questions, how can we generate sentences for augmentation without changing their labels. We do not expect EDA to be the go-to augmentation technique for NLP, either now or in the future. Rather, we hope that a line of thought might inspire new approaches for universal or task-specific data augmentation. So the paper I covered yesterday also mentioned uh, some issues with uh, ED, uh, data augmentation techniques and one of the major ones still there is, uh, or in even in recent works which uh, this problem persists is that uh, these tasks are not, uh, these techniques are often studied in a task specific domain but not in general and also there is no like good way to compare different data augmentation techniques given that they are being used on different tasks. Now let's note many of EDS limitations. For most performance gain can be marginal when data is sufficient. So if you already have good amount of data then the gain is marginal. For a 5 classification task the average performance gain for uh, I guess they missed the size was less than 1% when training with full data sets. Okay. So they've uh, clearly written it. And while performance gains seem clear for small data sets, EDA might not yield substantial improvements when EDS improvement was uh, when using pre-trained models. So one study found that EDS improvement was negligible when using uh, ULM fit and we expect similar results for ELMO and BERT. Finally, although we evaluate on five benchmark datasets, our studies on data augmentation in NLP use different models and datasets and so fair comparison with related work is highly non-trivial. So some work might use some other dataset and uh, might use some other model so there is no good way to compare the performance gain. Now the conclusion, we have shown that simple DA operations can boost performance on uh, text classification tasks. Although improvement is at times marginal, EDA substantially boosts performance and reduces overfitting when training on smaller datasets. Continued work on this topic could explore the theoretical underpinning of the EDA operations. We hope that EDA simplicity makes a compelling case for further thought. Also they've now acknowledged uh, their I guess uh, we thank uh, Sheng Yu Huang, Fei Xing and Yifang Wei for help with study design and paper rev revisions and Shou Ziao Zhao for insightful feedback. Jason Wei thanks Eugene Santos for inspiration. So I guess we've gone through the paper. I'm really sorry if I mispronounce any of those names. Overall this paper is pretty great. It showcases how even a simple technique is able to get such good performance gains in the world of uh, very very deep models nowadays. So let's have a look at the supplementary material as well. So uh, the code is here. The synonym thesaurus uh, for all synonym uh, uh, were generated using WordNet. Word embeddings were a 300 dimensional glove embeddings. The CNN they use is a 1D convolutional layer of 128 filters of size 5, global 1D max pool layer, dense layer of 20 hidden units with value activation, softmax output. We initialize this network with random normal weights and train against the categorical cross entropy loss with the Adam optimizer. They use early stopping with patience of 3 epochs. So this is their architecture for the CNN uh, model CNN text classifier. For the RNN classifier, the architecture used in this paper is a bidirectional hidden layer with 64 LSTM cells, uh, 0.5 dropout, 32 LSTM cells. Uh, with So you have 64 cells with 0.5 dropout, 32 cells, uh, a bidirectional layer of 32 cells with 0.5 dropout and a dense layer of 20 hidden units with ReLU activation and softmax output. We initialize this network with random normal weights and train against again the same categorical cross entropy loss with the atom optimizer. They again use early stopping with a patience of three epochs. We saw these benchmark datasets. So some questions, uh, the code is here, all of this stuff. So should I use EDA for large datasets similar to how in vision adding color jittering might not help when you're training a classifier with a large number of images because that color jittering might already be present. So EDA might not help. Should I use EDF I'm using a pre-trained model uh, such as BERT or ELMO? Models that have already been pre-trained on massive datasets probably don't need. Uh, 
So we've already discussed this. Why should I use ED instead of other techniques such as contextual augmentation, noising, GAN, or back translation? So all of these are valid and you're encouraged to try them. But these techniques use a deep learning model in itself. And it's often high cost to do this using GPUs and stuff. EDA is relatively uh, relatively small and uh, uh, it often gives performance gains in the same order. And the cost to implement this is uh, often high compared to the performance gain for these uh, deep model techniques. So is there a chance that using EDA will actually hurt my performance? So it's unlikely, but there's always a chance. It's possible that one of the EDA operations can change the class. So, but even so deep learning is robust to massive label noise. All right. So how does using EDA improve text classification performance? Although it is hard to identify exactly how EDO improves the performance of classifiers, we believe there are two main reasons. The first is that generating augmented data similar to original data introduces some degree of noise that helps prevent overfitting. The second is that using EDA can introduce new vocabulary through the synonym replacement and random insertion operation, allowing models to generalize to words in the test set that were not in the training set. Both these effects are more pronounced for smaller data sets because in smaller data sets, uh, the number of synonyms for a word might be limited. It doesn't intuitively make sense to make random swaps, insertion on deletion or deletions. How can this possibly make sense? So swapping two words in a sentence will probably generate an augmented sentence that doesn't make sense to humans, but it will retain most of its original words and their positions with some added noise, which can be useful for preventing overfitting. So this is something which help, is helping machines more than humans. For random insertion, why do you only insert words that are synonym? as opposed to inserting random words. So data augmentation op operation should not change the true label of a sentence as that would introduce unnecessary noise into the data. Inserting a synonym of a word in a sentence opposed to a random word is more likely to be relevant to the context and retain the original label of the sentence. We have answered all the questions pretty well and overall the paper was a great read. I'll highly recommend you guys go through it yourself and I'll probably go through the code as well uh, in the future. So thank you guys for joining in. Hope to see you again next time.